Now, time graphs are basically graphs with the x-axis as time. The big ones for motion are distance time, velocity or speed in this particular case. Um, if they just said that something is moving with a certain speed, then that's speed. In order for it to be velocity, they need to tell you the direction. Now, they don't always have to be explicit because it could be in a picture. So they could be showing you a car moving towards the right and give you its speed. But effectively, they've given you its velocity because you can see the picture and you can see its direction. If it's a question testing uh, the concept of speed versus velocity, uh, so, so effectively scalars versus vectors, it's normally going to involve the minus sign. First of all, what I'd like to do is just give you the basic um, properties of the time graphs. It'll show you, I think, why uh, a velocity or a speed time graph is particularly important. And then we'll apply it to free fall with and without friction. And of course, free fall with friction is not free fall. Right, OK, so let's just draw three graphs. These, these three graphs, I should point out, are not necessarily linked. They will be when we do free fall, but at the moment, they're not linked. So time, 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 uh, position. I'll call it D. We use lots of symbols for position. X, Y, Z, D, S in SUVAT, V and A. I'm just going to keep it simple. Straight line straight line straight line now I know I've gone for a different kind of straight line there I've gone for a horizontal one because that is a really common one to meet basically if you work out the gradient of a distance time graph then what you've done is you've worked out the speed if you work out the gradient of a speed or a velocity time graph you've worked out the acceleration so if you go from kind of here across to here, what you're doing is you're working out the gradient. The gradient of an acceleration time graph doesn't really tell us anything. It does have a name. It's called a jerk, but not relevant. Uh, so we don't talk about the gradient of an acceleration time graph. But we do talk about the area. The area under it is the change in velocity or speed the area under a velocity time graph is the change in position. The area under a distance time graph, not relevant, doesn't tell us anything. If I just sort of turn this into a, a bit of a table here, because tables are good. They help us remember, because they become pictorial. Uh, as far as gradient is concerned, the gradient is equal to the speed. The gradient is equal to the acceleration. Uh, the, gra it, the gradient or the slope or the Steigung is not relevant. The area is not relevant. The area is the change in position. Normally that's the that's like the complicated way of saying the distance traveled. And the area is the change in speed. Um, okay now the idea is that when you look at this you can see, I think, that the velocity time graph tells you more than the other two. Because with the velocity time graph, you can get velocity values at every time, because that's kind of what it is. You can get the acceleration, and you can get the distance travelled. And because of that, this one is the most common. It's so important that if you get a bunch of words discussing the motion of an object, you need to be able to sketch the velocity or the, the speed time graph, and it allows you to work out what the heck is going on. So if they said something like, an object travels at 20 meters per second for 20 seconds, and then it accelerates over the next five seconds until it reaches 30, meters per second and then it travels at 30 meters per second for another 20 seconds oh gosh okay uh, it's all numbers it's all numbers and then it applies the brakes the person applies the brakes and they come to stop in another 10 seconds so then it goes to zero and then it starts asking you loads of questions 
then what you do is just say right okay let's just sketch it so I've got velocity and I've got time and I know it goes up to 30 20 10 and it says 20 meters per second for 20 seconds then it accelerates over five seconds so that means it reaches 25 to 30 and then it travels at 30 for another 20 seconds okay so that's now 45 and then it drops over 10 seconds to zero that's 55 so okay so that's what the sketch looks like now if they ask me how far did it travel in the first 20 seconds it's just that area because the area under a VT graph is the distance traveled if it asks me for the acceleration it's that slope or the deceleration which is an acceleration but like a negative it's just the slope that's all it is if it asks me for the total distance traveled then that's going to be a pain in the backside because I've got to work out that area plus that area plus that area plus that area but it's only one two three three rectangles and two triangles so it's not difficult to do um, it's pretty straightforward using basic geometry but all those words are like craziness learn to sketch the velocity time graph and you will make your life so much easier right okay so now let's do free fall okay so example free fall with and without friction and as we said earlier free fall with friction is not free fall uh, distance time speed time acceleration time but now they're going to be linked they're going to be associated with this situation now the first thing I'm going to do is free fall, no friction. Now the link between these is going to help us to produce the graphs. Um, with no friction, no air resistance, I hold an object and I let go and it falls. That's free fall. Distance is a function of time, no idea. Speed is a no idea. The one that I know is the acceleration. Because there's no air resistance, it will constantly fall at the acceleration due to gravity so it's just it looks like this and the value would be approximately 10 now I'm gonna say something now and I'm gonna say it three times the gradient of a velocity time graph will give me the acceleration okay second the gradient of this graph gives me this third time the gradient of this graph is a constant because this is a constant now if you're going to start at zero because it starts with no velocity because I'm just releasing it from rest and it has a constant gradient what will it look like straight line do not go for 45 degrees dare to be different I'm gonna go for a, a big slope you'll see why in a moment and I know that the slope is 10 okay next one the gradient of a distance time graph gives me the speed the gradient of this graph yeah, as the dogs are off gives me this okay the gradient of this graph is getting bigger and bigger and bigger now again if I start with zero movement so I'm going to start at the origin but whatever I draw it's going to have a gradient a slope that's getting steeper and steeper and steeper what's it kind of going to look like the slopes getting bigger and bigger and bigger we can have formulas for these things a is equal to G this one is V is u plus a t in other words it's linear with time and this one is s is u t plus a half a t squared it's the squared that's why it looks like that because it's a square with time uh, in this particular situation I could remove the use bits because I, I assumed it was released from rest so it the equations just become that but I'm just going to leave it in there okay and that's it now with friction and again the key is the acceleration one when I release something it accelerates for a short period of time and then what happens is friction starts to become significant it starts to affect the motion and eventually it reaches terminal velocity where the acceleration is zero it's not speeding up anymore 
it's not slowing down and it's not changing direction so basically it's going to look like this and then it falls to zero it doesn't really matter how it falls to zero that's not important at that point there that's when it's reached terminal velocity now if I just go through the same thing again the gradient of this starts off as a constant but then falls to zero the gradient falls to zero so what happens is it follows the same path but then the gradient falls to zero in other words it goes flat and that's when V is equal to VT and then finally and I think this next one is the hardest one to draw again it follows the blue curve but then friction kicks in the gradient of this starts to increase increase and then eventually levels off and becomes constant well when the gradient becomes constant that's a straight line so what we have to do is we have to follow the blue curve but then at some point turn it into a straight line so it's going to do this following it following it and then becomes a straight line and I think that's the hardest one to see because seeing the fact that this is curved is uh, you know mm, not so good it's like if I remove the blue one it looks a little bit like a hockey stick again those three graphs are all linked together and basically you need to understand those